This is Dr. Paul Beckett from Florum, the Japanese knotweed specialist. Welcome back, hopefully, uh, as this is part three of a three part series on knotweeds, the good, the bad and the fugly. The purpose of these uh, presentations are to show a broad overview of the range of knotweeds and related species there are out there. Uh, lots of people have heard of Japanese knotweed and the problems that uh, are associated it, with it and property risks. Uh, but there are a lot of other knotweed and related species that uh, look like it or are related to it that aren't a problem. So this last series, or last part in the series, uh, the fugly, is, is kind of unfair, really. I appreciate that. This is um, really about weeds. And a weed is just a plant that grows where we don't want it to. Um, so that's, that's quite unfair to, to start with, really. But uh, let's crack on. This is the first weed, Persicaria maculosa. Maculosa means spotted, and you can see here it's got these marked spots on the leaves. It's also got the um, classic segmented bamboo like stems of Japanese knotweed, uh, and it's got these little clusters of flowers that are like, like the abistort, uh, which is related to. But it's uh, a weed, it grows in bare ground, agricultural land, uh, built up areas, very common. Uh, we get sent a lot of pictures of this by people who are concerned that it might be young knotweed shoots poking through their garden. There's a, another picture of it. You can barely see the black blotch on the leaf there. It does come in, in um, quite a range of, uh, of shapes and sizes. Um, so it can look a bit different from, from plant to plant, but uh, it's a very common weed. This is a very closely related plant to uh, Persicaria maculosa. This is Persicaria lepathifolium, uh, pale Persicaria, as it's known. Uh, another common agricultural weed. In fact, I was recently sent a sample of this from someone who was concerned it might be knotweed, which they found in a bag of spinach that they got from the supermarket, um, which is a bit of a surprise. Luckily, it's not poisonous, um, but I wouldn't suggest eating it. Uh, I think it's quite bitter. Um, but you can see it's very similar in shape and, and uh, the leaf, leaf pattern to, um, to red shanks. It has a paler stem and a paler flower, but it can vary again, so that it's easy to confuse it perhaps with red shank. Now this is an interesting one. Uh, you can see here the stem looks very similar to Japanese knotweed. This is buckwheat, very common plant grown to produce uh, buckwheat flour from the seeds, which are used in lots of different um, dishes around the world. Kasha, a sort of a porridge in Russia. Soba noodles in Japan. Blinis, little pancake things in, in Italy. Um, so it's a really important um, agricultural plant. Um, Phagopyrum esculentum is its name. Phagopyrum uh, meaning beech and wheat. I imagine it's called that because the seed looks a bit like a beech seed, a beech mast. Uh, an esculentum meaning edible. Um, this isn't really grown widely in the UK, but it does pop up in some odd places. And the reason it does that is because it's uh, a common component of very cheap wildflower seed mixes and also bird seed. So here it's popping up in, in a border here, um, which probably from, from bird seed or could, could have been from a wildflower mix, I suppose. But this next photo, this was a plant that was sent to us, um, a photo that was sent to us by someone who, who found it on their, on their lawn. And we quite, get quite a lot of photos of this sent in a similar situation. And we always say, ah, is it near a bird table? And inevitably, it, quite, it usually is. So that's what's happened here. Um, somebody's put bird seed on the table and the seeds have dropped down to the lawn and grown into a little buckwheat plant. Now, this plant, Russian vine, is a bit interesting one. It's not really a weed but it grows like crazy um, and can get out of hand very quickly. It's a common name is mile a minute. So that gives you an idea of, of, how, of how, um, how it behaves. It is related to Japanese knotweed, but it looks nothing like it. It's a climbing plant for a start, these tendrils that, that climb over things. Um, so that's the easy way to detect that it's not Japanese knotweed. But we do get sent a lot of photos from worried people because it's so invasive. Um, and here you can see it growing over a fence 
uh, absolutely covering everything, but it's produced that lovely white flower. So if it does behave itself or if you can manage it well, it is quite a nice plant plant to have. Uh, and there's a close up of the of the, of the shoot with a little tendril there. Now the reason this is particularly interesting is that it can hybridise with Japanese knotweed. If you see Japanese knotweed seed at the end of the season on a plant, it will uh, almost certainly have been produced from the pollen fertilising the, uh, the, the female flower on the knotweed plants, uh, the pollen of Russian vine. Now that isn't usually a problem because it almost never produces viable plants. However, when it does, and this is incredibly rare, it produces this plant here, uh, X. Raylopia conoliana, the X denoting that it's, uh, it's a hybrid, the X being in front of the, the genus, at the, the start of the name denoting that it's a, a hybrid between two genera, Fallopia and Raynutria, and Connolliana comes from Anne Connolly, which is uh, the name of a pioneer researcher at Leicester University who has done a lot of work on Japanese knotweed. And it was named um, for her birthday by her colleague John Bailey, who's uh, another eminent scientist working on, on Japanese knotweed, and he's, he's uh, given me this, this photo to use. Um, you will probably never see this plant. It's called uh, another name, common name for it is rail yard knotweed because this was found in the early 80s in, in a rail yard, I think near Leicester. Um, and here it looks quite a lot like Russian vine. It's quite tenderly, but it's not. It's not nearly as uh, as much of a climber, it, or, or it's not a climber at all. It's more bushy, like Japanese knotweed. So it. Um, has got the two characteristics of the two parents, the, uh, the twiny type leaf and stem of Russian vine, but the more bush-like form of, of Japanese knotweed. Very rare. I, I've only heard of, uh, of a shoot being seen um, one other place, and that was in Swansea, and uh, uh, that hadn't developed into, into a big, into a, a mature plant. So quite an interesting um, plant, a hybrid, but uh, yeah, at the moment, uh, it's it's very rare. So most of the seed that's produced from Russian vine, Japanese knotweed, does not germinate into viable plants that survive to uh, to adulthood. Um, so that's it. That's the fugly. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this series of uh, uh, of presentations on on Japanese knotweed and and uh, related varieties. If you have, please like. Uh, if you've got any comments, then please um, add them below or email them into us. If you're interested in more facts about Japanese knotweed or you have an issue with knotweed that you'd like dealing with, please do visit our website and get in touch. Um, if you come across a plant that's interesting um, and you want it identified because you think it might be knotweed or you know you've got an interesting knotweed that you'd, you'd like, us, like to share with us, please do uh, send them in to us. You can do that most effectively through the upload my photo function on the website. Works very well on a smartphone as well if you're out and about. Um, but yeah, please do uh, get in touch. We'd love to hear, hear from you. Thanks very much for listening.